Coffee Break Italian, Season 2, Episode 30. Buongiorno a tutti e benvenuti a Coffee Break Italian. Io, come sempre, sono Mark. E io, come sempre, sono Francesca. E tu chi sei, come sempre? E io, come sempre, sono Eva. Allora, siamo molto contenti di essere qua ancora una volta per un altro episodio di Coffee Break Italian. Come state, ragazzi? Come stai, Ayla? Molto bene, grazie. Eh, come stai tu, Francesca? Sì, benissimo. Poi oggi c'è il sole, c'è anche il sole. in Scozia. <ride> anche in Scozia, è incredibile, no? Bellissimo, bellissimo. Allora, abbiamo un, una domanda, una domanda per Ayla, non è vero? Eh, penso di sì, è la stessa domanda. Mm-hmm. Because obviously over the past two episodes we've been missing Ayla, she's not been here. But no. we have a, a question for you. Come sono andati gli esami? Eh, spero bene. Uno era molto difficile, ma gli altri due erano abbastanza facili. Ho studiato tantissimo e attentamente. Oh. I managed to find some time to listen to episode 29 and study adverbs. Bravissima, Ayla. Wow, brava. brava. <laughs> ok. E hai ascoltato anche l'episodio 28? Ovviamente. Dopo aver fatto gli esami, ho studiato italiano. Gli episodi 28 e 29 erano utili e non troppo difficili. Mi è piaciuto anche il caffè culturale. Ah, il caffè culturale sulla scuola italiana. We have indeed learned a huge amount over the past 30 episodes. And this episode is a bit of a review of what we've covered in season 2. So hopefully this will be good practice for all our listeners and indeed for you, Ayla, as we review what we've learned over the whole of season two. We'll not really be doing a presentation section in this episode, so we'll all just stay together and you can help us, Ayla, go through what we've learned. Allora, siamo pronti per cominciare? Sì, mettiamoci al lavoro. E voi ci ascoltate. You can all listen to us. We've covered so many topics over the course of these lessons in season two. And you may be wondering why we're kind of summing things up just now. And that's because in lessons 31 to 40, something different is going to happen. But we'll tell you more about that later. For now, let's think about what we've learned and come to some conclusions. Sì, è, è ora di tirare le somme, Mark. Oh. Siamo all'episodio 30. That's a, a brilliant expression. Tirare le somme. It's like drawing conclusions with the idea of sort of taking stock of, of the situation. Sì, sì, è una bella espressione italiana. E sì, come dici tu, abbiamo fatto davvero tanto nella, nella stagione 2 di Coffee Break Italian. Eh, I can really feel that our listeners have made that big step forward and moving from beginners to I think intermediate now sì. and I think Ayla is exactly in that position allora bravissima Ayla sei stata fantastica thank you yes looking back I can really see that I've learned a great deal probably the most important thing for me has been able to talk about events in the past it makes such a difference however to be honest I still struggle at times when it comes to choosing the auxiliary for passato prossimo and also the difference between passato prossimo and imperfetto it's not always clear for me I guess it's entirely normal having doubts of of this kind and as I have stressed many times, learning a language is more of a, a circular process. You you learn a new grammar point, then you start to practice it, you make mistakes, you go back to it, you learn the those wonderful irregularities that make Italian so idiosyncratic. Wow. And then, <laughs> and then you go on and it, it's this circular process. But let's see if Francesca can help us summarise the key points of... Let, let's start with the passato prossimo. Francesca, can you summarise the key points of the passato prossimo for us? Sì, Mark, con piacere. And I also uh, must say that I agree with what you have just said regarding, I think you said, the circular process of learning. Mm -hmm. It's something I also tell my students all the time. Uh, As for passato prossimo, well, we can generalize by saying that usually um, transitive verbs, which is verbs uh, taking a direct object, mm-hmm. have the auxiliary avere, while verbs describing motion from one place to another 
and the verbs of change as well take essere. And don't forget that also reflexive verbs and verb piacere in the past take essere too. I think what is interesting for me here is that because we're working on Coffee Break German season two at the same time, and I, I think that some of our listeners are actually doing both Coffee Break German season two and Coffee Break Italian season two, which is quite a challenge. Brave. There are differences between the two languages, but there also are similarities. And this idea of change of change of state or change of location, that is very much something that does cross between the two languages, between German and Italian. However, it's okay to, to generalise here, to have an overall idea. And let's not forget that Passato Prossimo is used to describe a precise event in the past. And it's normally accompanied by some kind of time reference. But can you give us some examples of this, Francesca? Sì, certamente. Allora, ad esempio, ieri mi sono svegliata presto e sono andata con i miei amici a pranzo. Abbiamo mangiato insieme in un ristorante indiano. Mi è piaciuto davvero molto. Ok, uh, let me see. Ayla, can you perhaps translate what's going on here? Let's do it sentence by sentence and, and our listeners can be working through this as well. So, Francesca, give us the first part. Ieri mi sono svegliata presto e sono andata con i miei amici a pranzo. Ok, Ayla, what would that be? Yesterday I got up really early and I went for lunch with my friend. Yeah, ok. Sì. With my friends, i miei friends. amici. Ok. Ok. Abbiamo mangiato insieme in un ristorante indiano. We ate, we ate in an Indian restaurant. Mm -hmm. Insieme. All toge together? Yeah, together, ok. So, and then the last part. Mi è piaciuto davvero molto. And I really enjoyed it. Yeah, so from piacere, using, of course, essere in the perfect tense. So all of those perfects there are describing the, the narrative of what happened yesterday. You got up, you went for lunch, you ate, and it, it pleased you. You enjoyed it. Okay, it's a good example showing the main points surrounding the formation and use of the passato prossimo. Brava, Francesca. Grazie. Okay, so <laughs> can you give Ayla something similar in English to translate into Italian and, of course, for our listeners too? Sure. Uh, last week, I went to a concert in Edinburgh. I enjoyed myself a lot and I even met my friend Julia. This is testing all of the things about the passato yes. prossimo, isn't it? Okay, <laughs> good. So let's hear it again. We'll give our listeners and Ayla some time to think. Last week, I went to a concert in Edinburgh. I enjoyed myself a lot and I even met my friend Julia. Okay, let's split this up sentence by sentence. Let's have the first part, Francesca, and then Ayla, see if you can come up with the, the Italian version. Last week, I went to a concert in Edinburgh. La settimana scorsa sono andata ad un concerto in Edimburgo. Ah. Mm, almost perfect. Prepositions, uh, prepositions. Uh, with cities. We don't say in Edimburgo, but... A Edimburgo. Brava. A Edimburgo. Or you could also say ad Edimburgo. Ad Edimburgo, okay, sì. The option there. It's not vital because it doesn't start with a. Sì. Uh, Edimburgo. Okay, the next part. Uh, I enjoyed myself a lot and I even met my friend Julia. Ayla. Mi sono divertita molto. Ah, brava. Wow. Okay. It's tricky <laughs> brava. because you've got a, a reflexive verb there and you're making it agree with yourself. Mi sono divertita molto. And note that the molto is molto. Si. It's an adverb. <laughs> not it's not molta. An no. <laughs> and I even met my friend Julia. I'm not sure how I would say even. Uh, yeah, maybe we've never covered this word. Persino. 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 Mm -hmm. Okay. Persino. You can also say perfino, can't perfino, you? Perfino, sì. Okay. So persino or perfino. So that would go before the past participle. Okay. okay. So in between the auxiliary verb and the past participle. Just like in English, I even or I have even met my friend Julia. Okay. So io persino. Incontrato la mia amica Giulia. Okay. ok, ho persino incontrato la mia amica Giulia. Let's do the whole thing, Francesca. Sì, la settimana scorsa sono andata ad un concerto a Edimburgo. Mi sono divertita molto e ho persino incontrato la mia amica Giulia. It looks like Ayla hasn't forgotten her Italian. Brava, brava. <laughs> sì, bravissima. 
This is not too hard. I think what's harder is deciding when to use imperfetto or passato prossimo. I know, I know. I think this is uh, an issue that all our listeners and learners of Italian share. But I, I noticed on Facebook that Mark's suggestion to use a thumb, I can't remember the sound exactly, <laughs> was really successful. I think you're referring to thumb. Thumb. <laughs> <laughs> That's Mark's word, yes, it's Mark's word. Puoi ripetere questa regola, Mark? Okay, right, so we've got the thum, which is the, the thing that interrupts something else. Um, so if you've got an ongoing thing, that's your, your roller, your imperfetto, um, and then that is suddenly interrupted by thum. Okay? Okay. Does it make sense? I think everyone loved it so much. <laughs> <laughs> I like thum. I, I like your thum there. <laughs> Thum. I would spell it T H T O O M if we really had to write it down, but I okay. don't think we need to worry about that. It's not a real word, just in case our <laughs> listeners are wondering. Okay. <laughs> right, Francesca, do you have a, a certain sentence to translate that Ayla can translate using imperfetto and passato prossimo? Certamente. As a child, Matteo never played with other children, but one day, while he was going to school, he met Giovanni and they became good friends. Un po' triste. Un po' triste, ma un po' complicato. Okay, okay so let, let's, let's go through this in more detail. As a child, Matteo never played with the other children, or with other children, rather. Okay, let's just do that bit first. As a child, Matteo never played with other children. Ayla, is that an imperfetto or a perfetto, just to begin with? Imperfetto. Imperfetto, esatto. Because it's an ongoing description of the fact that he never played with other children. It wasn't just that one day he didn't play with other children. It's describing what happened. So can, can we try to put that bit into Italian? As a child, Matteo never played, imperfetto, with other children. And in Italian, you would have to say with the other children. I'll have a go. Da bambino Matteo... Non giocava mai con gli altri bambini. Brava! Ok, sì, sì, so molto bene. Let's hear it, Francesca. Da bambino, Matteo non giocava mai con gli altri bambini. Ok, now the next part is describing something that was going on when something else happened. So, while, when or while he was going to school, thum, he met Giovanni. Ok, so let's take that, just that part. But one day, while he was going to school, he met Giovanni. Try that, Ayla. Ma un giorno, mentre andava alla scuola, scuola? Scuola, scuola sì. sì. Hai incontrato Giovanni. Sì. Brava. So, ma un giorno, mentre andava alla scuola, ah, non si dice così? A scuola. A scuola. It's one of those ones that you just use the a, ah. you don't need to use the definite article. Okay. So, ma un giorno, mentre andava a scuola... Then he met Giovanni. Ha incontrato Giovanni. That's your thum. So, mentre, while, he was going to school, andava, imperfetto, thum, he met Giovanni. Ha incontrato, perfetto, Giovanni. And then, what happened? And they became good friends. Okay, Ayla, try that part. Actually, do you remember the verb to become? Diventari. Diventari, good. Okay, so, they became good friends. Hanno diventato buoni amici? Mm, Francesca? Uh, there is probably one thing there. Verb diventare oh. is kind of a verb of change because you are something and then you turn into something else in a way. Ah, uh, so it must be essere? Sì. So it would be sono diventati? Bravissima, Ayla. And there you've got the agreement as well. Sono diventati buoni amici. Ah, okay. I always seem to make that mistake. Now, coming back to alla scuola or a scuola, we did go through lots of prepositions and lots of sort of rules about when prepositions do take the definite article and don't take the definite article. There, there was a lot to cover in those lessons about prepositions, but we, we got through it and hopefully it's just a case of practicing further. And I think reading in Italian could certainly help with prepositions 
Actually, Mark, I was thinking of the reading club we are running just now. Absolutely. It would be the perfect way to get more practice in not just prepositions, but lots of Italian. Uh, we have a, our weekly reading club and that is it involves basically a text that is sent to you by email. If you're not already signed up to the reading club and the, the texts are absolutely free, so you can get the text every week by email, then make sure you do that. If you go to coffeebreakreadingclub.com, you'll find out more about the reading club. Okay. Let's do some practice of our prepositions. Yes, and I have a translation ready for Isla. Okay, let's hear it. Okay. The colleague with whom I used to work in Rome is going to the US in a month. Oh, it's not just prepositions that Isla's going to be practicing here. There are a lot of interesting grammar points to discuss in this one. Brava, Francesca, <laughs> an excellent example. No pressure, Isla, whatsoever. Okay, so let's see if you can work this one out. The colleague with whom I used to work in Rome, is going to the USA in a month. Allora, il collega con cui lavoravo a Roma Bene. fa negli Stati Uniti in un mese. Brava, there's one thing not quite right there, Francesca, sì, can you explain? but it's good to see that Ayla nailed the imperfetto. She did, <laughs> yes. Bravissima. <laughs> and also the, um, the preposition negli, negli Stati Uniti. Mm -hmm. And also... Uh, yeah, the con cui as well, yeah. <laughs> wow. I, 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 I started by saying brava and there's one thing not quite right there, but I've, of course that's very negative. I should have been focusing on all the things that you did do correctly. Yeah, I'm really impressed. Brava. Okay. <laughs> so we had the good imperfetto, we had the con cui, the with whom. Very good, because that's a, a tricky uh, relative pronoun there. And then we also had negli, because it's not agli, but negli here, of course, because we go in a country. Si. Okay. What was the thing that didn't quite go right? Uh, again, the preposition. There's one preposition. In a month. Can you remember which preposition we used to convey the idea of in X amount of time from Fra. now? Fra, bravissima. Or tra, or tra. both okay. work, yeah. <laughs> fra or tra. And that, it means in a certain amount of time, fra un mese, within a month. I always kind of think of it as within a month. Does that, that make sense? Si, si, si. Okay, so fra or tra, a very small word, but nonetheless a, a very useful word. Absolutely. It seems to me that in Italian, the smaller the words are, the harder it is to use them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. A ver, <laughs> Like ne, for example, yep. si. mm -hmm. it seems like such an innocent word, but it has so many meanings. Let's practice ne, but we'll do that after the break, because we need to stop for a little breather after all these relative pronouns and tra and fra and all that. Okay? Si, okay. ne abbiamo bisogno. Ne abbiamo bisogno, <laughs> si, brava. <laughs> Interrompiamo questa trasmissione per una comunicazione importante. If you'd like to make faster progress with your Italian, don't forget that you can use the premium version of this course, which features video versions of the lessons, comprehensive lesson notes and bonus listening materials. Allora, cosa aspetti? What are you waiting for? If you'd like to take your Italian to the next level, go to coffeebreakitalianplus.com. Welcome back. You're listening to a review episode of Coffee Break Italian in which we're continuing to go through everything that we've got. Well, not quite everything, but lots of the things that we've covered in season two, episodes one all the way to 29. And just before the break, Ayla mentioned that lovely little word, ne. I suppose that this is tricky for English speakers because there's not always an equivalent for it in English. Francesca, puoi rinfrescarci la, la memoria? Oh, che bella espressione, rinfrescare la memoria. Sì, eh, non preoccupatevi se ne è un po' difficile. Don't worry if you find it a, a bit hard. Uh, I'm sure uh, little by little you will master this 
Uh, what I call a parolina magica. Parolina magica. <laughs> Gosh, we're full of, of expressions in this episode. We've got sì. parolina magica. Um, and, and then you also said little by little. What's the expression in Italian for eh, little? Piano piano. Piano piano. piano, piano sì. Okay, so let's talk about ne. Yes, to recap quickly, uh, we first did ne when we introduced partitive articles, uh, uh, words like del, dello, dei. I'm sure you all remember partitive articles uh, and uh, they are basically the equivalent of your English uh, sum. Basically ne is used to replace the object uh, of a sentence which has been mentioned before when accompanied to some sort of reference to a quantity. I'll give you an example. Imagine we are in a shop and uh, we can hear a conversation like this very easily. E buongiorno, vorrei del pane. Certo, quanto ne vuole? Ne vorrei un chilo. Okay, so there you're saying, I would like some bread, and the, the shop assistant says, quanto ne vuole? How much of it do you want? And you said, ne vorrei un chilo of it, I would like a kilo. Exactly, and we're using ne to replace the word pane, and we're adding the reference to quantity, un chilo. Un chilo. Okay, can you give an, uh, another sentence to Ayla for her to translate of course. using the ne? Sì, 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 sì. Allora, I love chocolates and I always eat too many. And it may help Isla to think of I always eat too many of them. There's your ne. But we don't always say the of them in English. So I love chocolates and I always eat too many of them. <laughs> Mi piacciono i cioccolatini e ne mangio sempre troppi. Brava, Brava well done. And, and even better because you've got the troppi, which there is a nice adjective. Sì. It's not an adverb, troppo, uh, but ne mangio sempre troppi. So, mi piacciono i cioccolatini, I like chocolates. And we're talking here about the, the chocolates that you would get in a box, a sì, box of chocolates. Sì. E ne mangio sempre troppi. Brava. Talking of ne, would it be right to say Francesca adora il cioccolato? Ne parla sempre. Sì, bravissima. <laughs> eh, è vero, ne parlo sempre perché <laughs> mi piace. And in this way you have also introduced the, the other function of ne, which is to replace a phrase containing preposition di and uh, a noun. So instead of saying Francesca adora il cioccolato e parla sempre di cioccolato, ne allows you to avoid the repetition. Exactly. And the same is true for chi? Sì, esatto. The same is true uh, for chi in phrases which contain uh, preposition uh, a. Ad esempio, let me ask you a question. Let me think. Eh, Aila, pensi alle vacanze? What would you say? Sì, ci penso spesso. Bravissima. Okay. E if I were to ask you... Hai la pensi agli esami? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> e no, non ci penso più. Ah, non ci pensi più. Ayla is not thinking of her exams anymore, but she's only thinking of her holidays. Great. <laughs> that, that brings up another question, doesn't it? Eh, yeah. <laughs> Ayla, sono curiosa. Come eh, sempre. No, cosa dici? <laughs> Dove vai in vacanza, Ayla? Vado in vacanza a Londra. Ah, che bello! E con chi vai in vacanza a Londra? Ma eh, scusate, chi è curioso qui? Io o Marco? Va bene, sì, sono un po' curioso anche io. Ah, vabbè, Ayla, con chi vai in vacanza a Londra? I see what you want me to say here. Ci vado con mia madre. Brava, brava. brava. And can I try adding to this? Okay. Oh. Ci vado con mia madre fra una settimana. Bravissima, bravissima. You have been able to throw in preposition fra, which we mentioned before. This is amazing. Well it's, done. It's amazing. And I think fra is such a great preposition because it's what we sometimes call Francesca. Yeah, hey, fra. it's <laughs> Okay, we've covered lots in, in the episodes between lessons 1 and 29, and obviously it's impossible to go through everything, but hopefully this episode has been a, a little bit of a refresher in some of the things that we've learned in Season 2 of Coffee Break Italian. Coffee Break Italian 
As ever, you can access the premium version of this lesson, which includes the video where you'll see all of the words on the screen and also the lesson notes and the bonus audio material. And we're just about to record that bonus audio material in which we're going to be practicing some sentences which take in all sorts of content from uh, throughout season two. And you can find out all about the premium version at coffeebreakitalianplus.com as ever. Now, before we finish, there is some important information. And that is that lessons 31 to 40 are going to be a little bit different. The idea is that we're going to be putting into practice everything that you've learned in lessons 1 to 30 of our course. But that's going to be within the context of a kind of radio play. So you're going to be listening to 10 episodes of this radio play, all in Italian. And it's going to be featuring some, well, some familiar voices, perhaps some voices that you don't yet know, but certainly some voices that you do know. And uh, these are going to be voices taking the different parts of the people in the radio play. So it's a great way to practice what you've learned so far. And of course, there will be discussion and explanations of the language in those episodes of the radio play. And all of that is coming soon. However, it's not coming immediately. We're taking a little bit of a break, basically so that we can get it all recorded. It's quite complicated getting everyone together for this radio play. So we'll be doing that over the next couple of months. And if you're listening to this as it goes out in, in June, then you'll be able to listen to the radio play uh, uh, from the, the, the middle of August onwards, hopefully, uh, if all goes according to plan. Of course, in the meantime, don't forget that there's plenty more content that you can be using to practice your Italian. First of all, on Facebook. That's right, Mark. Um, every week on Facebook, we post language challenges to help you practice your Italian. You can find that at facebook.com slash coffeebreakitalian. And don't forget, you can also find us on Twitter at Learn Italian. And if you'd like to find out what happens behind the scenes here at Coffee Break Languages, search for Coffee Break Languages on Instagram. And it may well be worth your while checking out the Coffee Break Languages channel on YouTube because there we've started posting some new videos and indeed over the summer months you're going to be finding some new Italian content on YouTube and we think you'll really enjoy using that to practice your Italian. So follow Coffee Break Languages on YouTube. Don't forget to subscribe and then you'll be told exactly when we launch our new content there. I think that's everything for this episode information-wise and we hope that you've enjoyed spending some time with us, having a coffee and learning some Italian. È tutto per oggi, grazie molte e arrivederci. Sì, a prestissimo, ciao. Ciao, ciao. You have been listening to a production of the Coffee Break Academy for the Radio Lingua Network. Copyright 2017, Radio Lingua Limited. Recording Copyright 2017, Radio Lingua Limited. All rights reserved. <laughs>